into it. And, and he obviously is into remote viewing. He's done it before. And there's the big, long process on how he basically figured out how to build a amplifier so that he could do it better. And then there's a, quite a long story about why it's so important. Mm-hmm. So, whew, his first remote viewing was at night. He was able to remote view um, people 10,000 miles away on the sunlit <laughs> side of the earth. Uh, there's all stuff about him nearly hitting a palm tree. And then he came across um, a bridge. Uh, there was a couple of soldiers with rifles wearing a light blue, light blue beret. Um, there was a commander with a red band. Um, he, they ran past him. He was able to focus and follow them. Um, and basically he was able to, to watch them for a little while. And, and it goes on a bit. He says, when he's talking about this, that this all goes through the pituitary gland. Um, the pituitary the gland is a small bean-shaped gland situated at the base of your brain, somewhat behind your ah, nose, okay. between your ears. Despite small size, the gland influences nearly every part of your body. Yeah, hormones it produces help regulate important functions. So, pituitary gland. So, the pineal gland is in kind of the same place. Uh, welcome to Briefest Conspiracy. If you are new to our channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, share it on Facebook. It really does help us out. He, he was able to remote view his own soul, and it's an orange orb um about the size of a uh oh it's a two inch diameter orange ball of plasma that's your soul um okay. mine's dark and angry i don't like it. i like it that it's orange orange is always my favorite color when i was growing up don't know why um if that soul when you when you do remote view your body becomes paralyzed except for some eye, eye movements which sounds like sleep to me but apparently that's a, what happens um, upon death, all the separate modules in your body, because you've got seven modules in your body, they're all connected, um, assemble to become, um, you, you become a single energy light being. That sounds nice. I'm looking forward to that. I'll be right. Um, he gets into the more interesting, though, with, uh, with that, with John Sinclair, when he talks about he started to remote view further. And one of the things was he, he remote viewed while he was at um, a subway um and he realized that he was near an area of plexiglass and it actually improved his ability to remote view so he went home and built that into his machine built a, a plexiglass screen um i like that and this he, he relates building the device to and when we get into the trans teleportation system it's even more more distinct so if something happened mm-hmm. it helped him to improve his design or or, or realize something i quite like that so he's in the subway. He's talking to the leader of the Palladian Federation, which I'll tell you all about in a second. Um, and he realised that that plexiglass screen potentially helped him strengthen his remote viewing ability. The Palladian Federation um, is 400 light years from Earth. The Federation is a group of over 100 intelligent beings. One member of the Federation called itself the Intelligent Insect Beings. I'm not sure you'd call yourself that, would you? Anyway, these are the beings that flew the triangles language, over Belgium. I don't think they use our language, so I think it's probably irrelevant what they call themselves in our language. They, yeah, <laughs> and it would. He would then use words, I suppose, that are uh, that he would it's, understand. He would categorise yeah, it, wouldn't he? So he would categorise it as an insect. They wouldn't categorise themselves as an insect, but yeah, I know what you mean. No, yeah. but that's how we would categorise it in order for people to yeah. understand. Yeah, exactly. But these intelligent insect beings are the guys that were flying the black triangles over Belgium and France, according to Sinclair. Do you think maybe this Things? Sinclair is just uh, a person? Nutter, that, possibly. No. Oh, oh, no. Okay. Do, do, you think, do you think he's, <laughs> he's the one that's been in, invented in order to release some secret documents uh, in the form of patents in order to uh, in, inform the public about some of these? Very secrets? possibly things that have been going on because that's what seems to be seems to be going on here it seems like this might be like the the, the you know the exact extracts of a you know a remote viewing program that the cia was up to or whatever mm-hmm. and, and and this this isn't the re- the, the talkings of john sinclair it's the mm-hmm. talkings of somebody else and he's just posted this patent under that name to get the information out there into the public domain i mean this could be an organized thing or it could be a whistleblower Again, like you said, and these are different stories that he's, he's aware of and he's putting it into this narrative 
um, so that it could be the information could be released. Um, he goes on to say, uh, a year later he was remote viewing, um, and there's the blonde aliens. I remember of the Palladian thing. The blonde aliens is not their real name. They fly they fly beam ships. He basically tells a story about how there was a problem on one of these beam ships, and he was able with remote viewing to basically inform another ship that could go and help that they were in trouble. Um, so the ship was able to be saved using remote viewing as a communication technique. Right? Mm -hmm. He then goes on to say that another race, when they realized this communication technique could be used, they decided to join the Palladian um, uh, Federation based on this technology. They thought this technology was so valuable that they would join the Palladian Federation because of it. In no time, 20 other planets also decided directly because of this technology to join the Palladian Federation. He then talks about that's why developing this technology and developing remote viewing is so important because it might actually allow us one day to join the Palladian Federation, mm -hmm. which sounds mental, but there's, if, if you think of it at a logical point of view, if this actually is real, then it would be the ultimate communication. I've always said to you before is that, that aliens will not be using radio because radio, if you've got, if you can traverse stars, radio is a completely useless communication technique. Um, you may as well. If we if we send a colony now to Alpha Centauri, there it's five light years away. So any radio communication is going to take five light years to get there. They're on their own, really. They may as well, you know, may as well not bother building a radio. You may as well just send them off and go, OK, there you go. And uh, we'll speak to you in five years sort of thing. And we'll send our, you'll, you'll get our answer in well, ten. ten. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it round time communication is ten, yeah, to, to get a message. So, and that's yeah. assuming instantaneous response. <laughs> exactly. So they're on their own. We know that communication is vital, though. You know, we need to talk to each other. Um, if there's a problem, you need to be able to talk to other people, get help, get, you know, all this sort of thing. Communication would be really vital. And if you've got a fleet of starships going out there, you need a way to talk to them. Yep. Remote viewing might be the way to do it. Quite and, possibly. And especially, it, especially if everything in the universe is connected and we are capable of contact over large distances which wouldn't surprise me when you look at quantum entanglement mm -hmm. over billions of light years so why well, why, why you know if, if, if two mm -hmm. two two individual photons of light can communicate with each other over billions of light years of of, of space why can't mm -hmm. why can't a human can't yeah. speak with another human that's separated by that same billion light years of, of space it, it seems possible in my my yeah. my mind well, exactly, and, and quantum mechanics says it's possible. That's the thing. There are there are very complicated reasons why they don't think we can use quantum entanglement as a communication device. Yeah, I like the idea. That, I think I think all it is is that quantum entanglement for me just gives me the, the, the idea that two people communicating over vast distances is not mm. silly because two photons of light do it. So why couldn't yeah. two beings that have developed the technique to, to do so do the same? And I just yeah. think that that... That, that's all it really tells me. I, I don't think that the communication over vast distances by beings, by two humans, mm. would be the same as quantum entanglement. I just like that principle to say that it might be possible. That principle gives us an insight, doesn't it? It gives an insight into that, that it might be possible. Um, yeah, which is fascinating. So saying about that, the full body teleportation, that's silly. No. Well, they've, they've already they already have teleportation. They've yeah. already, already got teleportation. They can they can basically teleport part uh, part you know atomic subatomic particles. Yep. So basically, we've already beamed it into space, haven't we? Didn't the Chinese beam it to a satellite or something? They yeah. they they can quantum tag atoms and then transmit the information so that it can be rebuilt so on the other side. You know, with, the, with a teleporter, is you're actually destroying the mm. particle at the send send side. And then yeah. at the receive side, you're then can creating that particle. Rebuild it. Yeah, yeah you recreate you're, it. Essentially, a teleportation device is, is, is yeah, destruction and recreation of the same 
particle. So now I would think that that, that is a it, it would be better as a replicator. So so if they did yeah. do this for humans, if they teleported you, would it be yeah. you? Yeah, or or did you die? But I would say beaming materials would be brilliant. But you wouldn't really be beaming them; you'd be replicating them because you could just scan um, a car on the Earth, and then if you had this transporter technology, you could just create a car in space. You wouldn't need to actually. We're not, we're not very far away it. from that anyway, are we? If you think about yeah. it, with uh, with um, 3D printers, we could already mm. send a signal from one part of the world round to another part of the world where they've got a 3D printer and get it to 3D print an object. It's... But he actually talks about, though, that this is slightly different. He talks about a teleportation device where you actually travel through hyperspace. Hyperspace or subspace? Oh, hyperspace. Okay. So in his device, other than the Star Trek way of doing it, or the mm-hmm. way we've started doing it, he's walking along a road that runs perpendicular to a nearby commercial airport, which is important. And there, were, there was a plane landing. There is also a wide iron grating for water drainage that crosses the road at the centre. Uh, then he goes on about the, the width and the grates and everything. And he was basically saying that he was walking down this road and he suddenly found himself transported approximately 50 metres further down the road. There was, um, there was a flag waving in the, in the thing as well. This is, is relevant. Um, he basically was saying that this unique set of scenarios the blades of the plane as it flew over the iron grating the um the way it was perpendicular to the where we were traveling created a kind of hyperspace vortex that allowed him to travel through he goes on and on and on in his in his all the other patents about how hyperspace and subspace are different dimensions we actually have a di- uh, we're a dimensional being, and the only one part of our module, he calls it, is sort of like in the in in this dimension. But we have the ability to travel. Parts of us, parts of these modules, have the ability to travel through different dimensions, hyperspace and subspace. Mm-hmm. In subspace, like the speed of light is much much slower than where we are. So traversing large distances very quickly actually becomes much easier in hyperspace it's sort of the opposite so you can physically travel through hyperspace um really quickly um so he's actually talking he isn't talking about a transportation system but he's talking about transportation system that allows you to walk through basically what i would consider like a wormhole he doesn't Mm -hmm. describe it as that but um a, a, a vortices that he's able to go through and he offers a lot of evidence to support what he's talking about um uh, dr kip thorne authored a book gravitation and um, with a dr Archibald wheeler at Princeton university and they're talking about general relativity space-time curvature calculations and he uses those to describe what he's talking about um he talks about our dimension is res- represented by the planck box in his thing which is i know about the planck theory um is uh something to do with mass and where objects are i believe Plank, yeah, Planck's um, com- constant. So it would seem to me that, again, though, I wonder if this story about the way he was walking down the road and he had the uh, uh, plane and blah, 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 is, again, maybe what we were talking about is that that's just a way of getting the information out. It seems like he has a nice story that explains why he thought of this. He had a background of information from all the other things he's been doing, like with um, remote viewing, and that's given him an insight into a lot of information. Then this event happened, which seems a bit random, which are, which accidentally transported him? That seems unlikely. He's trying to tell us a much bigger story in a simpler way. It seems unlikely that he's a real person, doesn't it? Yeah, it he does actually. I, I correct myself. He does actually call it a wormhole. Sorry, he does get a magnetic vortex wormhole generator is actually the device. So he is creating wormholes to transport through. Um, so you don't physically. It's not a physically a transportation device. It's a it's a wormhole generator basically. You yeah. could describe this more as a teleportation device than you could actually what they've done in the real world that I'm aware of scientifically, where yeah. they've been destroying things at one end and then recreating that atom at, at, at yeah. another point in space uh, and time. And it is a transportation device because it's a transportation method. It's, um, mm. oh, of it's course. you know, it's a, it's a method of transport from one place to another. But it's the last thing we talk about just really quickly is this is walking through wall system. Yeah. Um, or it's, it's actually a training system. Um, enables a human being to acquire sufficient hyperspace. Right. 
I'll start that again and try to put my teeth back in. This invention is a training system that enables a human being to acquire sufficient hyperspace energy in order to pull the body out of dimension so that it can so a person can walk through solid objects such as wooden doors. Um, he's, he's basically talking, this, this is basically the same thing, but he's talking about doing it without um, a technology. He's talking about talking, doing it through, you can build up your own energy. Uh, again, there's a lot of maths. Um, a lot of talking about vortices, a lot of ratio stuff, a lot about... He talks about this, um, the human body is comprised of 67% water. The high percentage of water makes this invention possible. The hyperspace energy well, being receives energy from our invention through seven vortices that run through the body. And he talks about the vortices again. Well, he's really talking about chakras. If they're genuine, and if it's not just some bloke sat at home um, in his pants, who's a very clever guy, just spitballing. If they are genuine, I would say that this is, I don't think this guy is an inventor. I don't think he's ever invented these things. I don't think he exists. I think this is a whistleblower. This is somebody that works in that realm, in these dark projects, potentially not even with the CIA, potentially with organizations we don't even know the name of. That again, there may be what Trump would call deep state or Illuminati or God knows what else we, we would call it. That is that is trying to get some information out there that these things are happening, these things are being done, and um, and he's presented it in a way that yeah is designed to make sense. Well, it's well designed to 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 to, to, to not just be the the pure mathematical formula, and he's actually tried to give some background of the inventions and yeah. and, 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 and and some some logical. Um, argument or arguments as to as to, to where he sort of realised that there might be something to this, and and then looked into to it more scientifically, perhaps. Um, mm. Yeah, I would is, say that there's it shows a long process though. That we're mm. talking about stories that have happened, historical events that have happened, which again leads to this theory that maybe he was he is part of some sort of ancient organisation. <laughs> That yeah. has this technology, has access to different technologies um, that that isn't open to the the world, and it's either nothing in this, and it's just a very interesting bloke, or we, you know, somebody really needs to look into this a lot more because there's so many little details in there that you feel like are on purpose, like the soldiers with the light blue berets, which sounds like the UN to me, um, and the commander with the red thing. These are little details that he's added, and you wonder. And there's probably details his... that pro probably need to be looked into very carefully because there's probably he's probably leading you down the garden path. If you probably mm. analyse all of these very carefully and do some in-depth research, I'd be amazed as to what are the links and what are the things you just go into and find out. I think somebody's put a lot of time and effort into producing these for them just yeah. to be abandoned. And they're either hints of something greater. Mm -hmm that's supposed to lead us somewhere greater or massive waste of time. <laughs> it's definitely one or the other. Yeah, and I suspect it's probably the former, not the latter. Because yeah. people, I don't know, it just, just seems like a hell of a waste of time for somebody to, to apply for all of these patents for a joke. Yeah. And then, but you, we do have things like the gimbal video and the evidence of triangular aircraft. And like, and, and like I said, Salvador pays genuine patent which was granted go in, which then kind of give this they give this some credence, give this some thing. And I start looking at it very differently, thinking this isn't just a joke. This is um, actually something that now is being looked at seriously. Um, but 15, but this goes 15 years ago, 14 years ago. It's like, OK, that, that makes me look at it more more seriously when i first saw this i genuinely thought it was a hoax and i see this this well, all over facebook all the time particularly the triangular patent the other and, thing to think of i suppose is um think about roswell roswell yeah. will be out of the official secrets act in two years let's see if we're still doing the channel then <laughs> that'd be interesting maybe we hold off doing roswell until then that's actually see not a bad idea out. that's yeah. probably not a bad idea but you can see what i'm thinking uh, yeah. that something big might be happening within the next couple of years then because of the ex this extra information that's going to be available in the public domain and they know the they've had is, to 
patent yeah. these things before the information is going to be released that they've been reverse engineering oh. this stuff since the 40s and 50s. That's an interesting point. I said that with the Salvador pay patents, didn't I? When we talked about that in a previous episode, I said it felt to me like they were preparing us. Yeah. It was almost like the Tic Tac video and stuff come out and they went, oh, we've got to start laying the groundwork. I felt like we should be very oh, careful. We've held, off this, we've held off this for 73 years. Oh, we've got to yeah. release all the information about Roswell in two. Oh, we better get a pattern out there before somebody else does. We've got to release these damn Tic Tac videos. We really need to, uh, we need an excuse for that quite quickly. So let's release this pattern to then make it so look like actually it's a drone. Why, maybe that's why they released those videos this year, the, 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 the Pentagon. Another one. Um, because they know that they're coming closer to having to officially disclose a load of stuff from the late 40s and, yeah. and early 50s. Um, Christ, mate. Yeah, that's a good point. The only problem with that is I think with the official secrets, like they can still um, withhold they something. they still withhold it further than 75? Oh, I, don't, well, I thought can, that... I they thought can you release to... it, but redact it if it's still if it can still affect uh, national national, security, national interest or national security. Five years. Yeah, but they just redact it, so they just uh, they have to release the document. But I think they can still sort of like edit it. Mm, okay. So we'll see. But they do release stuff. I mean, look at how they released. They accidentally released all the stuff on Operation Northwood when we were doing 9/11, and yeah. somebody really dropped the ball on that one because they they had all these horrible plans. They were going to invade Cuba or destroy. American targets and blame the Cubans, give them an excuse to invade, and they accidentally released it. And people were up in arms, going, "Why?" You know, and people say, "Well, we didn't actually do it. They yes. accidentally released this stuff yeah, sometimes, though, don't they?" So, so when the stuff comes right. out, we got to scour it. Yes. What they used to do was dump loads of information, knowing, ho- hoping that nobody would read it. And now we've got the internet and massive geeks out there. We do read it. <laughs> Somebody reads all of it. Everything. Eventually. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the internet was probably the single worst thing for the uh, mm. control of the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 you know, the, the government, yeah. the westernised governments of the world, of their populations. Uh, yeah. Really is, re- really is the worst thing. That's why they want to do the internet too, don't they? Where it's like a subscription-based service, like cable television, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing like TV. Because although they didn't count on was an army, an absolute army of geeks that will scour through all of it and find it and share it. And if they release it, we will find it. Yeah. Let's hope the next couple of years they're going to release some really interesting stuff then. Maybe they will. Maybe they will. <laughs>